This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Yo, this is Rob Margie, and you're listening to Our Lifestyle Podcast. Yo, yo, as we get started, we want to thank our title sponsor, Scraping the Coast. You can visit scrapingthecoast.com for more information. Their next event, 22nd Annual, is going to be the last weekend in June. They haven't yet announced it for 2024, but rest assured, we will be out there. One of the biggest, baddest shows in the country. Get ready for more information coming soon on Scraping the Coast. Tap on the hashtag Scraping the Coast for more information. We appreciate the continued support of Custom Car Show Productions. Vineyards. Wait, did you just say you've just finished with your parole, the PO, the parole officer? Parole, yep. We just finished. We had a drink together at the bar uh, to celebrate, uh, you know, uh, you know, not getting in any trouble. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we went six months without having any incident. And, uh, and so we had a, a drink at the bar, and, and uh, now I got cleared. And you never told them that Hank learned you how to use a hacksaw to cut off the ankle bracelets, right? That's how you were able to go to cruising with cruisers? Well, hey, that's how those damn um, uh, super glue. Dude, I just super glued that bitch <laughs> back together once I got back, and he never noticed. Never noticed. If they only knew you were at cruising with cruisers driving a police car, they would have never let you out of state. Uh, well, I would have been arrested immediately if, uh, if they would have known that I was driving a police <laughs> cruiser in no, Wattsburg, Kentucky. No wonder you wanted to keep turning the lights on. Hey, dude, I was you know, doing anything I could to you know make sure we weren't noticed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Could not risk the fact of getting noticed. Oh, yeah. That would have been bad. That would have been bad. Ho, ho, ho. Merry holidays slash Merry Christmas, like I said on the last episode. But this episode, episode 348, we got a jam-packed agenda. And I swear, was that Miggity Mike the mayor checking in? Just a moment ago, he called the bat signal, back, the bat line. Ho, ho, ho. Thank God that shit is over. <laughs> Man, I heard you and Jamil were out there playing Santa Claus, but just without the suit. Dude, I was playing that fat guy, and I tell you what, being that fat guy is not easy. God, Lee, son, it was a busy, busy season this year. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about that. This episode is kind of a part two continuation from last episode, so anyone that tuned in to episode 347, thank you. This episode, we're going to talk about our, our, our best of awards which we're going to rename. We'll, we'll break that news to you in just a moment. But Miggity Mike, we're also going to have James, one of our good friends, a great guy in the scene from Hashtag Mini Movement. He's got an event that he does in January, so I'll have, uh, I'm have i going to call him a little bit later and touch base, and we'll check in with the big homie uh, over at Hashtag Mini Movement. Hey, that's cool because we're going to see him soon at a place in January. Coming up January 12th through the 14th, Eastbound Get Down. James is making the trip, baby, and so should you. If you haven't made plans, let's do it, man. What are you waiting for? Let's get to Eastbound Get Down January 12th through the 14th at Ormond Beach, Florida, at Destination Daytona. So be there. Hope to see you guys there. Dude, I got people hitting me up saying, hey, I want to get Mike on the phone. They've got ideas for the show for 2025 and all that. And I said, man, you know, Mike, Mike's kind of busy right now, right? I mean, I can't just be – I can't just give out your phone number, Mike, to that, you know, for the people that are trying to get – you know, and read the FAQs about EBGD. Well, hey, I appreciate that because, uh, Jay, you are more than capable of answering any question anyone has. I got full faith in you, buddy. Yeah, they're they're talking about you know can the U.S. Marshals bring them <laughs> into the show? And I said, come on, man, we're not we're not trying to attract any criminals to Eastbound. You know what I mean? Hey, as long as they pay their twenty dollars for their uh, weekend armband, they are more than welcome to come as well. <laughs> It'd be what <laughs> con, con, con Air Con Eastbound get down, dude. <laughs> get Nick Cage on the phone, bro. Oh man, 
Again, as you heard at the top, we want to thank our title sponsor, Scraping the Coast. Every June in Biloxi, great people will be out there. But Mike, the overview of the episode, as always, brought to you by Hammered Weekend Wear. And I want to remind folks, if you go to H-A-M-M-E-R-D, weekendwear.com, they've got two pre-sales right now, Limelight, uh, in the limelight because I run tight. shirt is off the chain, bro. Dude, yep. I love it. Yep, and they've got the C10 Whiskey Business, C10. Uh, they also have the subscription, so you can do the T-shirts, the banners, the hoodies. Uh, I call it open enrollment. The cool thing is, I know it's maybe a big slice of a, a chunk of dough right now, but if you're a super fan like we are, you, you end up saving money over the course of the entire uh, season for 2024. So uh, check them out oh, here on the weekend wear. Hey, Adam and Dizzy absolutely killed it on these ideas, man. These these two new shirt drops were, were awesome. Like them. Dude, Tom, like them, like them a lot. Tom Jenkins' head's blown up. You know he's got limelight now that was on the cover of Tailgate. Yes, yes he does. The world famous Tom Jenkins. Oh, yeah. Now, Mike, the general updates, dude, I got to ask you this before we get right into the meat and potatoes. I mean, we're going to go, dude, we're going right for the gusto here in just a moment. But I got to ask you, man, how. I know this year, you know, people are telling me you got to stop the gallivant and you got to wrestle Mike to the ground. But I got to ask you this: I saw the gallivant and you ramped it up around the holiday season, and it had to feel good, right? Because I mean, you've been working your butt your butt off out there. Well, we've been killing it at the post office this year, and I can't speak for all the other mailmen, um, but or women, male office, women, or 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 male women. More, yes, can't discriminate at all. But, dude, absolutely killed it on my route, man. And my people, they love me. I love them. And uh, and so, dude, we've been busy, busy, busy. So, yes, it was good. I got done Friday uh, right after work. And uh, I left about 7 o'clock, hit the road, headed on up to Orlando uh, to spend Orlando – or to spend – I'm sorry, to spend Christmas in Orlando with our daughter because she couldn't get off of work. So, uh, it, so it was nice, man. It was beautiful weather until, I think – christmas day and uh but dude i ran into believe it check this out we're at universal studios and who do you think i would have ran into at universal studios luke our None homie other than the world famous mini trucker of the year mini trucker you know extravaganza i mean dude chad luke at it was at universal studios him and his family and his two boys and well him his wife and his two boys his family and, dude, it was just cool as shit. Was he riding a skateboard around there? I heard he was doing tail slides and all kinds of stuff, doing hand plants. Well, dude, that, on that, Space Mountain. that was the funny thing. Well, dude, that was the funny thing, though. He went, Well, remember, Space Mountain's at Disney World. It's not at uh, it's oh, not what are, How do you pronounce but, it? But, but he had that, that, the, high, the, the, the hoverboard, and he was doing the hoverboard all around. Yeah, he Universal thinks he's Marty years. McFly, dude. Yeah, dude. He was over there, and I was like, bro, Back to the Future is not here anymore. They took out Back to the Future ride. <laughs> what went there? So, Do you know what ride went there? The Simpsons. The oh, Simpsons. dude, you know what? If that was a trivia this week, you would have been on point, bro. Yeah, dude. I can't. I keep getting them wrong, so I mean, shit. Hopefully one of these days I'll actually get it right. But, right. dude, so we had a blast, man. We had a blast, and Santa brought me everything that I wanted and then some. And uh, But it was just good. To, it was the first time ever going to a hotel and having Christmas. Dude, we had Shannon and Ashley decorated the hotel room. We got, dude, I tell you what, <laughs> Shannon went above and beyond this time. She got us the suite with the damn view. I mean, it was it was unbelievable, dude. It was awesome. We had a great time. She decorated the hotel room, all the, the lights and the, all the presents and the tree. She even got a Christmas tree. Uh, we had an awesome maid, uh, the maid service that came in. And she goes, oh, my gosh, you have you have Christmas blow up in, in, in the room. and uh, But uh, Shannon gave all the stuff so we didn't have to bring it back. She gave her the tree and, and all the Christmas decorations and and, uh, and took really good care of her. And, and so we had a great time, had a real good time. My brother came up and uh, stayed up with us. So, uh, so, yeah, we had a great time. Dude, that's how you know you're balling out. And Hank sent me a text. He said there was a real nice neighborhood down in Naples that on Friday about 7 o'clock – they saw a bunch of smoke bellowing out of the place, and I go, "That's Mike peeling out of town right there." <laughs> Getting crazy. Uh, that pretty much that pretty much sums it up right there. Because I tell you what, uh, all the way all the way there, dude, I had no traffic. I, I got to I think I got there at eleven 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 thirty, 
and uh, smooth sailing all the way. So that's the key is leave late. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So how was your Christmas, Jay? Man, dude, it, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, family. It was a little bit of football, of course, as you know. It was kind of kind of unique because we have Christmas Eve on Sunday this year and then Christmas with Monday, and then there were three of the, the pro football games on. So that was super cool, getting a chance to watch. I mean, you know, I hate to disrespect any Cowboys fans, you know what I mean? But, I mean, any time <laughs> I mean, anytime the, <laughs> the Cowboys go down, right? I mean, come on. Hey, but, that's America's team you're messing with. Hey, you talk about America's team. I can't talk much because my team almost lost to the worst team in the NFL. So, <laughs> I mean, we lose to the damn Bucks, which we never even talked about, thank God. And then we almost lose. I mean, everyone's talking about, you know, we're hanging on by a thread. It's one of those years where you kind of go, yeah, if we get in the playoffs, great. Playoffs, we're just trying to win a game, like Jim Mora said. But I really kind of feel like they don't even deserve it. So, We'll have to see how that goes. But I want to ask you hey, this. You know, the last episode. You brought up, hey, but check this out. You brought up my Buccaneers, man. My Buccaneers are on a four-game winning dude, streak, bro. Four-game winning streak. Hey, just saying. Just saying. I just want to throw that out there. Oh, and I, I know DJ do. Mays. I know DJ Mays hates us talking about football. So that's all I got for you, Mays. I know you can push fast forward through that little part there. It didn't last long. What was you going to ask me, Jay? No, I was going to say this, too. Um, speaking about DJ Mays, check out our YouTube channel. I did a quick unbagging of some stuff that I recently scooped up from DJ Mays Radio.com. Go out there if you could support the big homie. Obviously, he's he's traveling state to state. Anything you buy helps with gas money and things like that. So shout out to Mays. But, no, I was going to ask you. I know last episode you did, you almost had a no-call, no-show and you did call in at the last second, you know, to kind of give yourself that, you know, skinny or chin 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 or however you say it. But the question I had was, you know, we talked a lot. I talked a lot about last episode, um, some of my favorite memories. And I know, early, you know, we did mention when we went to the Spark Show, how awesome it was, you know, getting to ride in, in difficult times with Chad Luke and things like that. But did you have any other good memories that maybe stand out to you over the past year? Well, bro, you brought up, man, we had so many memories. There were so many trips, so many uh, uh, car shows. And, and, dude, just being able to go to all these different car shows and being able to hang out with all, all of our friends from all over the place is, I mean, just that alone is, is just a great memory. Uh, but you brought up the Spark Show. And, hey, I got to give those guys, Adam and, uh, and Dizzy, props because, dude, that after party at that, um, I can't remember brewery. what it was called now, but that after party, I'm sorry? The brewery, the Forge Brewery. Well, the brewery, yeah, the brewery, for sh- uh, it was a brewery, yes, but I can't remember the name of the actual brewery. Dude, that was off the chain. That whole setup where we got to park and, and uh, the, just every, that was awesome. So they did a fabulous job of picking whoever picked that out, whoever's idea that was. It was a great, the people were awesome. Uh, that was really cool. But of course, you know, we started off with LST. Our first show of the year, of course, was LST and uh, the trip. Always have good times making that drive. And um, and then, of course, you know, just all the, the, the dinners and, and all the hanging out with all of our friends uh, from all over the place is uh, is always cool. Um, but, dude, I, and this will probably go for what we're going to talk about later. But, man, hands down. One of the best times I had this year and one of the best memories. Well, it has to be cruising with the cruisers, bro. Where else can you go and go to a show and (laughs) drive a damn cruiser? I mean, come on, bro. Where else can you do that? Yep. I mean, that that was awesome. And the show was was cool because it went it it helped so many people and you got to see you got to see it. You got to see it firsthand. The kids, just Friday night, how many kids came out there for the trunk and treat and uh, just the community that supported that show. And uh, it's definitely something to look forward to going back again um, next year. And uh, I mean, I mean, come on, where else can you go to a um, uh, Captain D's and uh, eat? And they like they they even let Jason go behind the counter. Long John Silver's. I call it Captain D's, dog. Oh, I Come bet on. you do. You and, like the Captain D's, I bet. <laughs> D's nuts. nuts. So they even let Jason go back there and attempt to work behind the counter. He screwed it all up and messed up a bunch of orders, but that's beside the point. 
And, uh, but you know, Scotty, the body hung out with us that weekend and, and it was just, it was a good time, man. It was a real good time. And that was probably one of my, uh, one of my best memories. And I mean, shoot, we went to mini Nats for crying out loud and mini Nats is always, always a good time. Um, but something new, something different was definitely cruising with the cruisers and it just, it, it helps so many people. And like I said, we got to see it firsthand driving all the way up the mountain fireworks. I mean, it's just, it was awesome. It was a great weekend a great time and uh you know they they killed it they absolutely killed it had a great time and and uh let's just hope that the the show just keeps growing and keeps on going man it just keeps on helping oh, and yeah. uh helping that helping that community real deal holyfield the general updates <clears throat> the general updates are brought to you by rose metalworks and spreading the love shout out to the big homies they continue to do great things in our scene so mike i got one question for you are you ready are you ready? I'm always ready, bro. I'm gonna get it wrong, but hey, I'm gonna I'm ready for it anyway. Now it's time to get serious. Nah, dude, everybody's telling me I gotta make them a little easier. So this one's gonna be a little softball for you. It's gonna be a uh you're gonna get to pick one, two, or three. So you <laughs> so f- f- first I'm gonna give you the question, then I'll see if you even need the one, two, three. What are the burglars' names? In Home Alone, oh, known home as. Home Alone. Jesus Christ. So, um, you want me to give you the on, one, two, on, or three? Hang on, hang on, because, dude, I, we watch this every year, and I think they were, I'm more than pretty sure they were the Wet Bandits. Yeah, dude. Was we, it really the Wet Bandits? Yeah, oh, we're going to give you two. If we're going to give you two tick marks for that one, because I didn't even have to give you, I was going to say the Wet Bandits, the Gold Tooth Bandits, or the Scarface <laughs> Bandits, but... <laughs> you, you didn't need it, Mike. So I mean, there you go. Oh, that is my favorite. To me, hands down, my favorite holiday Christmas movie of all time, right there. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cool fun facts about it. But I recently found something that it shows a lot of behind the scenes stuff and what was cool. And we a lot of us knew this, but the the stunt guys they went above and beyond in that movie, and they're all real practical stunts. And they said those guys were just beat up at the end, dude. They really were. So, um, they <laughs> it's pretty yeah, I damn good. Imagine one. why, right? I know, man. The micro machines, though. All right, out of all of that, what is your favorite stunt that they did? What was one of your favorite stunts that they that he did <laughs> to those guys? I mean, because by far, I know which one my favorite one is. Well, I kind of like the one where they're going to go into the treehouse, but it's hard for me to go against. I like the one where he heats up the doorknob and yes. <laughs> his hand gets yep. burned because then he, he goes and he slips and he busts his butt there and that type of deal. I love when he drops the paint can and the guy's like, <laughs> boom, and it hits the other guy. Dude, that, that cracks me up every single time. Yeah, yeah, the it iron, definitely does. The iron, he looks up, boom, hits the dude in the iron when the, in the head. <laughs> you I guys done or are you thirsty for more, man? <laughs> always, always. The trivia with Miggity Mike brought to you by The Spark Show. Every August, hit up thesparkshow.com. In Sevierville, we just mentioned the pre-party. Uh, they always do it big. This year was the 10th annual. I believe it was, and next year will be the 11th. Check out The Spark Show for more. So, Mike, uh, we're going to talk about our OLP 2023 Best of Awards now. I'm going to go ahead and call James from Hashtag Mini Movement. So, Mike, just stay on hold for a minute, man. Hey, hey, so like I said, I'm going to call James, and we got James from Hashtag Mini Movement. How you doing, our friend? All right, pretty good. How about yourself? Good, man. Hopefully Christmas was good and all that stuff. And man, I tell you, it'd be hard-pressed to find anyone that's more of a mini trucker than you. I love seeing all the videos (laughs) on uh, social media, Hashtag uh, Mini Movement. But uh, man, what do you got going on in January? January 20th, we do our yearly cruise-in slash winter cookout. It's just basically something to get people together and uh, keep something going on. If you if you don't, have, no matter what your hobby is, if you ain't got if you if you don't have things going on, people will lose interest. Sure. So uh, so we do multiple things throughout the year, little cookouts, or whatever. But this is the only one I really advertise as far as our cookouts wise. Now, where exactly is it? Do you hold it at your house or the local park? I actually, my place of business, I own Carglow Detailing, and uh, I've got a 2,500 square foot shop that we do it at. So that way, if it's cold, we can all be inside. If, if but usually, you know, we we still live in the south, not as south as you. But we're still in the south, so it's still it's still pretty. Well, it's still pretty decent. 
Oh yeah, and it's James on on Facebook. It's James and then K A R G L O W Carglo White W H I T E. Yep. So those three yep. different names. If you want to message him now, what city technically is it? Because it, it's the eighth annual winter cruise in. I think it's called. And is it Hamlet, North yes. Carolina? Yes, we're. Uh, <clears throat> I stay in Hamlet, but when people ask, I usually say Rockingham because more people know Rockingham than they do Hamlet, which we're beside of each other. It's in the same county, but technically Hamlet. Yes. Yep, got it. And if you go out to James's uh, Facebook, uh, or you just search on Facebook Eighth Annual Winter Cruise In, all separate, uh, you will see again. Uh, it looks like now from the time. Is it an evening time deal? Yep, yep. We do it in the evenings. We've been doing it in the evenings, uh, all eight of them. It seems to have worked out pretty good. It's grown each year, and last year we had the most people that we ever had come. And uh, But yeah, it's at night. Cool. Now, uh, it's brought to you, it looks like, by Earthbound C&T Club. Tell us a little bit about those guys. Yes, that's, that's our car and truck club. Um, we started it back in uh, 2016. And uh, so all the guys chip in and help out and either they cook or either they just donate some money and I go buy the stuff one or the other. So that's, that's how that come about. Oh yeah. Cool. Now, James, I think most of us know, but keep me honest, you, you basically have a business that's surrounding um, the car detailing world, right? Yes. Yeah. Car glow detailing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where the middle name comes in. So you guys can find them, yeah. uh, K-A-R-G-L-O-W, again, as the middle name on Facebook. Talk to us a little bit about some of your customers and what you deal with every day. Is it is it high-end stuff? Is a guy is it a guy with a lifted truck that just wants to clean it up the cruise for the weekend? Well, I'm angry. I, I do work for anybody, but all I do is full or complete details. I don't do, like, basic washes, the $20 stuff, nothing like that, but... I do work for uh, 12, 12 different dealerships in our area, plus private work, paint corrections, uh, um, interior details, you know, stuff like that, headlight restoration. Cool, cool. And the the thing that I've seen, you know, with you and I becoming friends over the course of time that I want people to know is like the commitment that you have to the mini truck scene is really unparalleled. And something that I really appreciate about you is you're constantly promoting so many other folks, not just your own brand, which yes. is hashtag mini movement. You know, your words have been in street trucks. I know a couple of years ago they did that kind of one off uh, yep. anniversary publication. Talk to us a little bit about your commitment just to the mini truck scene and, and why you love it so much. Yeah, I try to do whatever I can to help other people, you know, be known and, and help advertise for other people's shows, clothing brands, or whatever. I want everybody to succeed. And uh, because, I mean, I've, I've been a mini trucker since I was 10 years old. Like I told you in the past, my, my cousins built these Ford carriers back in the early 80s. And that was uh, before yep. I even knew the term mini trucking. So I, I've, I've been a long time fan of it ever since then. So I just try to keep it going, keep it alive, keep uh, keep people uh, in their trucks and, and try to encourage young people to uh, to get into even if they don't want to get into mini trucks at least get into something uh automotive oh yeah uh, oh yeah i think that's our, that's our next step is trying to figure out how can we get some younger people involved <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's um just so you know we're talking with james white from hashtag it's spelled out hashtag underscore mini movement kind of two main words on instagram slash facebook uh give him a follow now speaking of good kinfolk and the younger generation your son anakin you know i've slapped hands with him several times he's a good kid yes. he seems to really be um kind of loving the mini truck scene as well yeah yeah he does uh like i say he's he's fell right along in my footsteps and i didn't twist his arm on anything <laughs> that's something i never stuff i never do i'll present it to my kids and if you like it you do if you don't that's fine also but <laughs> yeah but yeah he, he has he's got a. Uh, He's got two trucks. He's got a a little static drop uh, hard body with some baby billets on it, and it, and he also has um, a '98 Nissan Frontier. It was a cover girl. It was a cover truck on mini truck, and I think it was 2014. Yep, another and truck. He has that that he's, yeah, he has that that we've been working on. 
And yeah. then now my my daughter, we're building one for my daughter now. She's 13, so she's got a hard body also. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, and it's got to be a good feeling too when you think about I know you promoted it. We have as well our friends over at Mini Trucking. Um, when you think mm-hmm. about the, the fact that that magazine's coming back, you know, I keep telling everyone go yeah. to mini truck and mag dot net and you could subscribe. Yeah. I know you've been promoting that, but what a feeling it is, even us as kind of outsiders to see that they now have a thousand plus subscriptions, dude. And we're talking, yeah. you yeah. know, for, for 2024, mm-hmm. man, an insane. Yeah. Yeah, that is. I saw that. I'm very, very happy with that. I'm glad to see that it's coming back. Uh, I haven't I haven't reached out to him yet, but I'd like if there's anything I can do to help out advertisement or whatever, I'd love to because, like I said, it's all about keeping it going. Oh yeah, yeah, and I think that's you know that that's a big thing where I mean, who would have ever thought that the magazine would be coming back? But I think it's it's so awesome that yeah. you know now we're we're on the verge or the cusp of 2024. And mm-hmm. what their website says is the return of the OG magazine, and that to me yeah. is super awesome because their commitment yeah. to the scene is huge. We've seen some some a lot of growth uh, with people, you know, going and following them, and now mm-hmm. we're seeing the numbers go. Wow, a thousand plus subscribers! Um, I got my subscription in as well, and yeah, to me, yeah, I did too. yeah something that was very um, refreshing was you know print is not cheap, but they were right. able to keep the 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 subscription rate at, at, at a certain amount and I, and I was certainly happy about that yeah yeah i was i was surprised i, I suspected it to be more which would have been fine i'd have paid it yeah yeah exactly so i think you know we'll have to kind of see how that goes but um when you think about the love and commitment that you have with some of the trucks that you own and you think about where the mini truck scene has come all this way, uh, you know, we, we all have to be excited for 2024, you know, with the 30th anniversary of mini Nats coming up and all that. It's oh, just, yeah. We're in a very good time, I think, in the scene. Yeah, I think so, too, because, I mean, you, you you know, you were there, and uh, but this past year, I swear, there was, uh, I think, as far as actual people-wise, there was a ton, a ton more people at mini Nats this year than I think in previous years. It felt that way to me, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, and I think them ramping up and adding in a few more people, and you know, this year I think I've heard talks of I got to get on with Jay Bell soon, but you know, some of the cars mm-hmm. will be staged out front and things like that. Right. I think you know that's really mm-hmm. cool, and you know, we're hearing guys again coming from as far as California. So you know, it's yeah. it's certainly in this economic times, you know, things aren't super cheap, but it shows mm-hmm. the level of commitment that people have. People are working the debut of their truck there, and um, you know, yeah. that's yeah. that's a good feeling to me. Yeah, each year uh, you see uh, trucks coming a little further away for 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 that show. So um, it's pretty cool, and uh, it's a cool thing Jason's doing. And uh, like you said, it's definitely the truck, the mini truck scene as well as the show scene is growing back. Oh yeah, and it has them now. Uh, a couple more questions I have for you before I let you go is, you know, Mike and I are talking about on this episode some of our best of type things. And last episode, we hit upon some of our favorite memories. But do you have any couple of memories that maybe stick out to you this past, you know, 2023 when you think about all of the different shows and local stuff that you may have went to? Any any good um, recollections? Uh, 2023, I, I hate to say it, but I haven't done a whole lot this year. I still don't have a topic. <laughs> <laughs> I wrecked my topic a couple of years ago, and uh, of course, as everyone knows, prices on everything's ridiculous now. So I've been trying to wait it out. So I haven't done that much. But uh, other than Mini Nats, which everybody knows about that, uh, uh, my buddy uh, Catfish took my truck down to uh, Louisiana. What was that? Back in October. Yeah, for KIK. Yeah, 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 and uh, that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. I, I I like going to places I've never been before, and uh, as well as shows. And that was a long ride, but we uh, I really enjoyed that show. Heck yeah, yeah. There was a lot of good memories I think that we had, and the cool thing is I know you know you've got a commitment to the many trucks you have, and you try to do mm-hmm. stuff that's local. You try to go to as many shows as you can. And I would oh, encourage yeah. people, if you, if you want to support what James is doing, you can click the, uh, the link in his bio. He's got it over to YouTube as well as his, uh, the Facebook page. So, you know, mm-hmm. go check him out. You post a lot of cool videos and, uh, we definitely appreciate what you do for the scene, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
Yep, no problem. So again, everyone, go check it out. Uh, James Carglow, K A R G L O W White on Facebook, uh, or you can search the Eighth Annual Winter Cruise in. Uh, all separate words, January twentieth in the evening time. Go support the real. And before then, we'll see you down here at Eastbound Get Down Show in Florida. And we appreciate you coming down. Yep, we'll be down there. Me and my buddy Ronnie and uh, my son Anakin. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, brother. Well, I can't wait to see you guys. Bring some of those bikes and maybe leave them down here for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, you, man. Might, might have to do that. Hey, James, we appreciate you, brother. And uh, have a happy new year. And we'll keep in touch with you and see you in a couple weeks. Yes, sir. You too. All right, dude, Mike, how awesome was that? You didn't mind holding for, what, like 20 minutes? I mean, I appreciate you saying that because usually you hang up on me, dude. Well, I hang up and I block your number. And, but for some <laughs> reason, for some reason, you got through. I don't know how the hell you did it. Yeah, I don't know how. But uh, thanks to, to James for coming on to talk a little bit about what he's got going on. Yo, it's a quick break for podcast identification. We want to thank one of our sponsors, Joey Dilworth at Get Decked. If you are a show promoter or you want to put your ride on a skate deck or that artwork from your awesome show, hit up Joey Dilworth, get decked underscore VA on Instagram, or just search Joey Dilworth on Facebook. Hit him up, let him know what you need, and he will get you squared away. He does all of the skate decks that we know of for the entire truck scene from scraping the coast to mini truck and nationals to of course one of our favorite shows lone star throwdown which is every february so good people i also want to thank our title sponsor scraping the coast we'll be out there in biloxi in the month of june so the last thing i ask is as we roll into the olp best of awards uh, if you listen to this and you're like an overnight listener and said person hasn't had an opportunity to listen do us a favor Maybe don't spoil the good moment. Uh, you know, maybe send them a link if they're not an active listener, and say, "Hey, uh, do yourself a favor. Listen to this episode. Uh, it's a shorter episode in the grand scheme of things. Let them know that um, again that they may want to listen to it because I think it'll be a cool moment for them possibly to hear for themselves versus just seeing on Facebook or Instagram that so and so won. So." Uh, I won't be posting the winners until probably Monday with a nice little graphic to kind of highlight those individuals and they'll be able to share that certainly. And, uh, you know, if and when they hear it, they can certainly share it. But uh, news will break, I think, pretty quick on some of these names. But for the most part, I just ask if you give them an opportunity to hear it through OLP first, uh, that would be much appreciated uh, because I know I would want to hear it uh, myself. Uh, also the last thing I'll say, and we'll roll into the OLP awards is, you know, we didn't really, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about some of the, the, the folks that didn't win. Uh, but I will tell you some of the people that didn't win this year, were already looking at what they're, uh, doing for next year. And certainly this is meant as a good thing. So, you know, if you're one of those good people out there that go hard in the paint all the time and, and you hear these awards and you go, wow, you know, I didn't win. Don't take it as a slight or don't take it as a negative thing whatsoever. We're just doing this as as a nice gesture. We pay with our own money uh, for these awards. There's no sponsorship involved, although Welch always treats us well. This is meant to be a good thing. So let's keep it all positive. Let's get sideways into 2024 and uh, have a safe uh, you know, rest of the few days. And let's jump right into it. Enough talking, ODB. Let's get to it. So, Mike, I got to say this. Something to remind everyone, you know, mini trucking, we are your mini trucking headquarters, right, at OLP, and we appreciate all the support. Uh, These are our 2023 Best of Awards. We definitely have a huge announcement to make, and really what we're going to do, Mike, going forward is we're going to call these the the OLP or the mini trucking headquarters OLP, OLP Honors. I think it just kind of rings a better bell. You know, the best ofs are cool. We typically hear the term best ofs at shows, right? You know, what are you know, you go through your top yep. fifty, top seventy five, top hundred, and then you got your best ofs. But you know, we want to separate a little bit from that and kind of go, hey, we're honoring the people that put the work in, they put the time in. We also, Mike, as we've talked about, we have a unique experience because this is our way to give back. Some people are gonna listen to this and go, Hey, I don't agree and that type of thing, and hey, like you've always said, it's 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 our it's it's our lifestyle podcast, right? It's it's what we see, it's what we deal with every day in terms of you know what we love in terms of the mini truck scene. 
Now, Mike, we partner with Walter's Chop Shop every year, right, to make our awards. Correct. And Graphic Disorder did our artwork, so we're going to have those awards here soon. Uh, something I want to also remind everyone that we have that unique opportunity because the, the magazine industry is a little bit different. They can't always you know, run a feature in the year that it comes out and things like that. So they're you know, no slight against the magazine industry, but we've got that unique opportunity to go, hey, let's look at January 1st through the end of the year and let's bring everything together in terms of who our award winners are. So without further ado, the first one we're going to talk about is the contributor of the scene. Now, Mike, maybe everyone doesn't know this person's name, but certainly you and I do. I mean, we're fortunate to say we do, right? Oh, absolutely. Now, something that's unique is, you know, typically in the past, you know, we, we look at, and we still do, we look at the contributions that people make and we look at, you know, a lot of it's not always a public knowledge on what people do, right? I mean, a lot of people don't go around going, hey, look, I gave $5 to charity or I did this or I did that. And um, this person certainly doesn't do that. Uh, we had to reach out to this person's significant other to actually get a little bit more intel on this person. Now, Mike, this person uh, has went above and beyond. And if you think about the amount of money that this person has raised uh, for charities throughout the year, this person has went to a ton of shows. And Mike, I even know I, I know that you, you probably have some words you want to say too, because I don't, I don't want to take all the credit here. Well, no, like you said, you know, like you said that we talked to her, her partner and, uh, and he, he helped fill, fill in some of the holes, but at the same time I put on a show, I seen firsthand what she did for our show and uh, her and her club. And I know she was a big contributor, a part of that, um, with her club for what they contributed to our charity and for our show. And I know because I was there quite a few times where she was at the same shows and she came in and just, it was unbelievable the amount of uh, stuff that she contributed uh, to these other charities, to these, uh, you know, to these other shows. And so, like you said, she goes to a bunch of shows. She is out there and uh, uh, she's got a vehicle and, uh, and she, she's out there, man. She's doing the damn thing. She's doing the mini truck and life thing. So uh, without further well, ado, Jay. Right, right. And I'm, yeah, exactly. And I'm going to say this. Her significant other went on to say, where do I start? She's killed it all year. She's gone to 13 shows. Most of them were out of state. She has donated so much of her time to charitable events, such as organizing and getting decent amounts or obscene amounts of donations for Sophie Circle, over a 1,000 Hot Wheel cars at Slambury. That was back in 2022, though. Funko Pops at the Spark Show, 128 blankets for Battle in Bama in 2022. Again, some of this stuff is kind of carrying over, though. Uh, a ridiculous amount of different things for Battle in Bama 2023. She's done a ton. She reps her club and the scene. This person thinks that she's the first female state rep in negative camber history. And uh, that's a club that has... According to this person, he thinks less than 10 females in it. You know, we're not going to hold him to that exact number. But uh, she does all that while working 12 hours a day because she is an attorney. And, Mike, we want to announce that Jenna Lease is the contri OLP's contributor uh, to the scene for 2023. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. And this award is brought to everyone by our family at Garage Gear Clothing. Again, hit up garagegearclothing.com for uh, shirts, stickers, banners, you name it. Uh, they also have free shipping options available, garagegearclothing.com. So, dude, Jenna Lease, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to call her someone that is in, in, in kind of the OLP inner circle, right? I get to talk to her a little bit here and there. She had no idea that this was coming. And I, I truly, you know, some people could go, oh, well, it's because you know this person. Absolutely not. When we look at the, the the person, the countless amount of things she does, we just got to say congratulations and 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 awesome job, Jennalise. And Mike, don't let Scott steal the thunder, right? Because Scott's going to try to no, rip that out of her hands. I mean, we've seen this animal. Well, I mean, dude, he, yeah, he he's going to try to take some of the credit, but we can't let him take the credit. And and by the way, that was nice what Scott said about his wife, but what he said had nothing to do with what we did because. Uh, at the end of the day, we're the ones that pick this. Oh, yeah. So, 
Oh, yeah. I agree, man. So, next we got Best Show. And this is brought to you by our kinfolk at CNS Metalworks. We've been trying to told y'all, if you need air suspension or AccuAir, air components, you name it, whatever you need, cs-metalworks with an S, cs-metalworks.com, also CNS Metalworks on Instagram. Hit up Chris and team out in Cali. They can bag your ride as well, if need be. But Mike, the best show, I know this one's near and dear to your heart. Uh, Why don't you talk just a little bit more about it? Well, I kind of let the cat out of the bag earlier on in the show because uh, when I talk about one of my favorite memories, um, I mean, just the hospitality uh, that those guys showed us uh, coming to their show last year uh, was just, you know, top notch. And uh, I've never been treated like that before. And like I said before, where else have you ever been at a show and you, you were able to drive a cruiser, a cop car, cruiser and be able to play with sirens over the intercom <laughs> i mean come on it, and then jason's driving and and uh what song came on again on the radio jay when you were breaking driving the law day? breaking the law breaking right the law because you're damn right we were well of course we weren't breaking the law because the law is the one that told us we could drive the damn thing so yep. i mean dude but just the amount of people that 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 show helps and just the cause behind it and it, it just, it was such a good time in the community. Everybody was involved. Everybody supported it. And it just, to me, it's only going to get bigger and better each and every year. I mean, the, the local, um, I don't remember what the name of that charity was that was there that fed us that night um, up on the mountain uh, Saturday night and the fireworks and whatnot. But those guys, they welcomed us up there. They wanted us there. And it just, it was such a good time, man. Yeah, uh, you know it's it, it was, and if you think about you, you hinted at this how much, and Randy said this over and over again, how much money they raised for the local community. You think about you know twenty plus thousand dollars, all of those folks that came out with their kids for the trick or treat night, all of the the camaraderie, bringing people together throughout the entire southeast, right? You know, didn't have the most high end trucks, didn't have the most amount of trucks. But like, like we always say, this is an OLP award, and it's it's not always going to be a show that we go to, but the majority of time, it's gonna we're going to try to pick a show that we went to, and we looked at what these folks did for the community and for the, the truck community. They're bringing two people together, Mike, and, and that's what it's about, dude. Oh, absolutely, and you say it wasn't you know the, the nicest or the most, but damn it, I tell you what, it was some of the, the most good times and best times I've had in a long time, man. Lots of laughs. And uh, uh, lots of good times. And that small little town, man, they took good care of us too. Uh, the different restaurants, and and uh, they knew they knew that we were there and what we were there for, and they appreciated us uh, being, you know, uh, you know, there, especially the there, Captain D's. They definitely appreciate pre- appreciated us uh, being there. And that was the busiest that they've ever been that weekend. And uh, and they, they they welcomed us for sure. Oh yeah, K Dog, aka Kyle Fanning, came through. Uh, with Ryder, and that was awesome. But think about it. Tip of the cap to Trooper Burton, Lee Caudell, L- a.k.a. LMC, and everyone that was involved with that event. Again, when we looked at Cruising with Cruisers, CWC, we looked at the, the total contribution to the to the community, the money they raised, the great things they're doing. They're bringing people together. And if, if you're anywhere near uh, Kentucky and you can make it to Cruising with Cruisers next year, we highly suggest that you do. A lot of good people, Cruising with Cruisers, tip of the cap. So, Mike, next we got the female best female mini truck. Now, don't get it twisted. Uh, a female can also win any of the awards. Okay, that happened last year with uh, our friend in Australia, Jasmine, a.k.a. Jazzy. But the best female mini truck award is brought to you by our kinfolk at Graphics Mafia, G-R-A-P-H-I-X. Mafia.com, if you need stickers or decals or some light design work, hit up, buddy. But, Mike, this person, okay, this this female, let's be more specific, really put it down. Many people chimed in our post in the Airhead Nation group and said, hey, they recommended this person. But that wasn't the only reason. We saw her at many shows this year, including, ironically enough, Eastbound Get Down. And she really held it down on her own, didn't she? Well, hey, just got that truck repainted, and uh, the graphics on it look awesome. And like you said, she is out there 
Pepper Zinton, and uh, she is out at a bunch of shows. And hey, I mean, we got to do it, man. We got to do it. So, who are we giving it to, Jay? Amanda Rose, uh, which is with the letter Extreme Body Drop on Instagram, ek, with an X, Extreme Body Drop. Uh, she's repping Acrophobia, as you know. Uh, she posted a very cool video today, ironically, cruising her truck. We saw her, of course, at the Toy Drop, which we can't thank uh, Goat and all of those folks enough for that event. But certainly, Amanda Rose held it down, and we want to tip our cap to her for doing what she did uh, she truly, I think, deserves it, and uh, we, we, we can't say um, thanks enough for her for, for building such a cool truck. Okay, next, we got Best Old School Mini Truck, Mike. This is brought to you by our kinfolk at Local Rides with a Z, L-O-C-A-L Rides, R-I-D-E-Z, localridesmagazine.com. They have a homegrown, awesome magazine. You can hit them up and uh, buy issues for as little as about 10 bucks. Now, Mike, with um, with the best old school mini truck, this was one that uh, hit us out of left field. We weren't sure. We went back and forth. There was a lot of discussion between you and I. But I got to say this, dude. It goes back to CWC. When we were at Cruising with Cruisers, you know I was gallivanting around, getting video and photos. And I came across the truck by the name of uh, a guy, a gentleman by the name of Alan Williams. Alan finished his truck this year, and a lot of you aren't going to know this truck. I'm going to share more of it, okay? And I know you're going, hey, who's Alan Williams? Some of you know him, some don't. But, Mike, his truck was a construction zone about 20 years ago. A Nissan 720, old school to the fullest, man, straight up and down. And I got to thank Alan for finishing the truck. My understanding is he put a lot of time and effort and money to get it across the finish line this year, Mike. You saw it out there as well. Tilt bed, just sliding rag, crazy weird sliding rag. I don't even know what it was out of, man. It just was insane. And I tell you what, people may not know his name, but they're going to know him after this because he put the work in, Mike, and I think he truly deserves it. Congrats to Alan Williams with the 720. Absolutely, because uh, you actually scoped it out, and like Mike, you have got to go check out this truck. You are all excited about this truck, and I think you picked the award. The award when we were at the show, played like, hey, that's our mini truck, uh, old school mini truck of the year, right there. I'm telling you right now, and sure enough, uh, that's that's who was he was actually um, the OLP pick at the show, and um, and then now he's going to be our old school mini truck of the year. So congratulations, Alan. Oh yeah. Congrats. Next we got Mike brrr, best mini truck brought to you by the kinfolk at the freaking weekend show, which Mike freaking weekend is every year now in uh, Biloxi every September. And uh trip is really killing it with social media. So we're excited about September 2024 for the freaking weekend show. Yes. The hotel rates are set. And you can call now and get your uh, your hotel um, your hotel rooms. And the hotel room is right there on property. So guys, you better not wait. You better get in there and get that uh, get that hotel room uh, before they're all gone. Hotel motel holiday in. Okay, so Mike, we're gonna cut right to the chase. This person has put the work in over the years. He redid his truck again. We slap hands with him all around uh, the East Coast. He's a great guy, and I'm telling you, when he rebate when he redebuted his truck at Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, I had a smile on my face from ear to ear. He's a super awesome guy. He continues to give back. I know a few years ago he made a decision to kind of move along from uh, the folks he was um, kind of with for one show, and he started his own show uh, just to kind of continue to give back and push the scene ahead. Uh, he, he's he's big on local community. He's big, as we know, on trying to make things affordable for folks and families to go out and spend their money. And, Mike, I know you know this truck, don't you, homie? Hey, I kind of do know this truck. And what's really funny is, is this truck and this guy, you're also going to see at Eastbound Get Down January 12th through the 14th. Ah, oh, it's rigged, Destiny, Mike. It's Daytona. rigged. It is rigged, bro. And I don't care, damn it. I don't care if it's rigged. Hey, it's ours to rig. So, yes, I know exactly who it is. So tell us who it is. Justin Wyatt, a.k.a. J-Dub, with the Mitsubishi Mighty Max. He redid it this year. 
He's done this truck a few times. I saw it at Laid Out the Park many years ago when it was black, and I loved it with the red. He really embodies the scene, Mike. He really does. He's kind of that... I kind of look at J-Dub, I mean this with all respect, you know, he's kind of like that that southern guy, uh, kind of small town feel to him, you know, he's a guy that's going to go out and fish with his kids and hang out, but damn it, he's going to bring the heat to a mini truck show and kind of come off the top ropes. I appreciate his friendship, but more than anything, I appreciate what he does, I appreciate what he does for the scene, and redoing your truck when it's already sick, and bringing it back out, top, top ropes, dude, that's what we call tip of the cap brother to mr j dub aka justin wyatt hey everything you just said is fair enough fair enough exactly because fair enough is his show <laughs> we, we had j dub on a few months ago and we'll have him on again this year to talk about his show he's good people and remember uh ronnie at c10 talk always says that the trucks are cool but the people are cooler that really applies i feel to justin wyatt okay next yes, mike does. Next and last, best truck. Now, remember, this is an OLP slash Mini Truck and Headquarter Award. This is the overall impact. Okay, this is brought to you by our kinfolk at Scraping the Coast. Scraping the Coast is every June, typically that third weekend in the month. Biloxi, Mississippi, a flagship Mini Truck Hall of Fame show. We hope to see you out there at Scraping the Coast this year. So, Mike, this truck... I don't know if you guys are going to be able to figure this out. It debuted at the OLP booth at Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, thanks to some good kinfolk. We saw a preview in Custom Trucks Mag, a feature in Custom Trucks Mag, Street Truck Show Off Series winner, guarantees a cover, SEMA 2023 kicker booth, also shot at SEMA for the cover of Gage Magazine, shot for the cover of Street Trucks in September 2023, the cover starts arriving Christmas week of 2023 for the January 2024 issue and a two-page huge photo in the SEMA Show magazine. We got to give it up, Mike, to who? Hey, none other than our boy, Randy. our boy, Randy Frederick. The, yeah, there you go, Mike. And I know some people are going to say, hey, I look at, Mike and I looked at this entire contribution there's never been a truck in the past 20 plus years I can think of that had as big as of an impact as this truck did. It hit the nostalgia right where 30 years later after Pat Nickel, tip of the cap. And I think with it landing on the cover and Brandon Burrell just hitting it out of the park with this amazing, amazing cover, I just got to say congratulations. So uh, congrats, Randy. You deserve it. So, Mike, I think that's it, right? Uh, Jay, <laughs> not so fast, oh. partner. Oh, 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 that's right. You talked. Yeah, that's right. We did talk. So yes, we did. For the first time ever, the OLP honors. We're going to include what well, we're kind of calling some lifetime achievement awards. Uh, these awards may change. Maybe they'll stay the same each year. But it's our way to go uh, to show these folks that they're going above and beyond, and kind of give these people their flowers, as I always say. Uh, and number one, Mike, we thought about this one. This person, she she's a true, I think, I truly believe that she's an unsung hero of our scene. She's done a lot. I don't think she always gets the credit. When All Time Low Magazine kind of uh, shuttered, you know, I think her hopes and dreams a little bit were like, man, you know, she loved doing what she does. And Mike, for our media slash scene contributor, uh, we want to give this kind of vanguard award, if you will, to who? None other than Michelle Boone. Michelle, you deserve it. You go to so many shows. You shoot features. You sweat your butt off. I've seen you had almost heat exhaustion this year. I think it was that scraping for busting your butt out there. And maybe not everyone knows Michelle Boone's name. She's a proud member of Relaxed Atmosphere. And, Mike, I tell you what, she busts her butt more than most people I know in the scene, and we wanted to tip our cap to Michelle. Absolutely. Absolutely one of my favorite people in the whole scene. I mean, from the coverage that she provides to the helping at many, many shows, bringing, she brings us, her and her husband bring us Boone Games, you know, at the Spark Show. Booze Games? I mean, she's got Boone Games. Oh, okay. They call them the Boone Games. Instead of club games, they're Boone Games. And the, the, the moon, the Boone Shine that she makes for everybody, the desserts that she feeds everybody. I mean, there's just so much, and she's just one of the sweetest, nicest people you'll ever meet uh so yes 
if anybody deserves this award, it's definitely Michelle. So uh, definitely make sure um, when you see her, just tell her, tell her congratulations because and give her she's a big being recognized. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and she blushed a little bit, but she said she she gave me her word that she'll shoot the coverage for Smut Fast. So I said thank you, Michelle. Oh. That oh, may have, okay. that may okay. have given her a tick mark in her binder. You know what I mean? She's got a binder. <laughs> I just got to get the key to this other cabinet. Um, okay, then, Mike, last but not least, this is kind of a what I'm referring to, we're referring to as a lifetime achievement slash, let's call it a Vanguard Award. And here, and follow me for just a moment, and then we're going to wrap this up. This year, we really felt like when you looked at the best mini truck, you know, we went with Justin's truck because we truly felt that was it. But when we looked at what truck came back this year and really had just an unbelievable presence, really that could win mini truck of the year every year, depending on how you slice and dice things. But I got to give uh, a huge shout out. I got a ch- chance to visit him at his home this year. But this guy took this very iconic truck that you would say, man, you can't do anything else too. And this truck went out and went harder than it had ever went. You know, he added to it. He took it in January to the Roadster Show. Uh, this truck represented the mini truck scene there like like no other. And it debuted 10 years ago, but the presence of it is still felt. It was on the cover of the West Coast Influence. It's doing the same damn thing that it did 10 years ago, kind of running game. Of course, just not on the East Coast now. And this uh, achievement award goes to Stranger, which is now owned by Brett Hunsaker. He's a great guy. Of course, Pascal, as you know, Mike, uh, had built this amazing truck, and he kind of was in a different place in his life. He let it go. And I don't think there's a better person uh, to take this award than Brett because him and his awesome wife, they are truly putting the time and energy and effort into it, Mike, and it's helping push the mini truck scene even further than we ever thought. Oh, absolutely. And we can call this almost like the comeback player of the of the year award. This is the comeback mini trucker. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, award. Yeah. Yeah, what's yeah. the uh, so, what's the what what are the, in the football they call the twelfth man or is it the twelfth man? Twelfth man, yes. Yeah, man. I think Hank's the twelfth yeah. man every year, but I think this year, you know, we're kind of Hank was willing to give it over to Brett Hunsaker to say, "Yo, you took this truck to another level." Like when when uh, when uh, MC Ren says, "We on another level than y'all," you know what I'm saying? That's what Brett said. Hey, let's take it. Let's take what Pascal did. Let's ramp it up. Let's amp it up a little bit. And, Brett, I can't thank you enough for letting me come by your place, but for what you're doing and pushing the scene ahead with this amazing truck, we love you, homie. No, his o mizo. Mike, I think that's all we got. I mean, you got a promo, Eastbound Get Down, one more time, brother. One more time, bro. Eastbound Get Down, E-B-G-D. January 12th to the 14th. E-B-G-D. 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 The 12th to the 14th, Destination Daytona. Ormond Beach, Florida. Guys, come on out. Let's have a damn good time. Come on down to the shun- the Sunshine State. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous, and we can't wait to have you. Guys, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be off the chain. We got the hotel right on property. The the after party, I'm sorry, the, 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 the Friday night party, pre-party, is going to be Friday night right there on property. We're going to have Cornhole, DJ Mays. So, guys, come on out. And let's 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 have a party, bro. Let's have a good time there and uh, at Destination Daytona. So eastbound get down January twelfth through the fourteenth. Be yeah. there. Thank you, Mike. Everyone have a safe New Year's Eve. Be safe. Happy New Year, everyone. And we're gonna get sideways and below that smoke right out of the undercarriage of the trucks as we get into twenty twenty four. Everyone be safe, y'all. Thanks, Mike. See you, Jay. Have a good one, brother.